On this beautiful June morning at this wonderful and historic location, we welcome everyone from home and abroad to the ceremony to dedicate the inscriptions and the wall of life and to honor and celebrate and remember the names of some extraordinary friends of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. At the head table on my left is Professor Menachem Ben Sasson, president of the Hebrew University. Uh, Uh, beside him there is, is the no way you will hear me, even if you applaud before. <laughs> uh, sitting next to him is the chairman of the International Board of Governors, Michael Federman. <laughs> the university rector, Professor Asher Cohen. <laughs> Vice President for External Relations, Kami Gilon. Vice President and Director General, Billy Shapira. And Vice President for Research and Development, Shai Arkin. My name is Michael Krasny. <laughs> and uh, I now have great pleasure in inviting University President Professor Menachem Ben Sasson to the lectern. Good morning to you, welcome home. I know that a few of you heard me on Friday night, but many couldn't make it. So allow me to begin with the paragraph that I began on Friday night in order to make sure that I share with you and you share with me the same feeling that we had in this meal. At the beginning of the board, in the, in the beginning of the evening, we still wait for somebody who comes with helicopter, but he'll join us in a second. The Hebrew University preceded all of, all of us, even the most veteran. The cornerstones were laid 30 years before the State of Israel began, and everybody knows the story. We know it, but we hardly feel it any, every morning. Because we deal with science, and science hasn't got any borders, any language, any religion, any color. So he deals with law, and she deals with chemistry, and they deal with brain, and in no time we are going to nanotechnology. Everybody has got her and his own field, her or his own field of interest. And we talk internationally. But when it comes to the family of the Hebrew University, you do not feel it but once a year. Yes, you go to the United States and all of a sudden you feel because that you are in Australia, because a friend from Australia, Perth, Australia, participate in the events. You go to Monaco and you find there a friend from Canada, Toronto. He happened to be there. So he's a Monarchian for the hours that he comes. You go to England and you find there a friend from Israel because he's now in a business meeting in London and he participates in the event in London. So each region has got its own peculiarity, exclusiveness. And you cannot find fight with the person in Madrid that he is not Madridian because he has got somebody who came from New York and he was hugged and brought to the ranks and to the family of the Hebrew University. Once a year, once a year, we feel this humble feeling, I admit, it is a humble feeling when we, you come. We feel the globe. We feel that we are all over the world. South Africa, Australia, west of the Canada, British Columbia, Columbia I mean, Montreal, East Coast, West Coast, Hungary, Spain, Portugal and England. Yes, we have people who are from Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Yemen. Luckily enough, they escaped on time and they went to other places. But they still nurture, continue with the culture 
of the forefathers and they come with this legacy and share with us. This uh, event of the world of life bring us all together and I ask you, urge you to read the stories. Many of them I had the luck to be participated to be participating in the process of joining to the family or to the, to the person. Others I just read. Each page is a different page. Each story is the whole world. <coughs> Each event has behind itself some unique, exclusive <coughs> and personal <coughs> background. I cannot repeat on them. Michael, read some of it. You know some of it. At the end of the ceremony, talk to each other. Tell the story. In one of the cases, I was in tears. I won't say it, but the people know. <coughs> Emotionally. But there is one ratio to all. If I understand you, and allow me to talk on your behalf. And in a second, you'll see that it is on our common behalf. The common, common, common denominator of all of us, all of, of all of you, who gave these resources to us, was A, to be part of the family. And it is, look around, a great family. <coughs> but it's beyond it. You wanted to nurture the future of the State of Israel. You wanted to be responsible for the future of the region. You wanted to be in charge of feathering and bettering the world. And you know that you can do it maybe once in a lifetime. That's what you have. No, maybe twice in a lifetime. So you start with A and you go to B. <coughs> As the director said, Mikhail Chayl, from strength to strength. <coughs> In this case, <coughs> you looked for something that is in the junction, in a turning point that you know that you put your finger here and all of a sudden you have a flower that gives color, smell, life to many other things. And that's the Hebrew University. What can we, what can we give you in exchange? We give you the research. We give you the results. We come with the results. You heard the rector yesterday. 51st in the world, first in Israel, another time first in Israel, another time first in Israel, first five in Europe. That's the profile. That's what you wanted us to do. So we try to fulfill your hopes. We try to meet with your expectations. And we want you to go home with a symbol. What? symbol one can take with him, except for the pin of the university, and everybody knows the Hebrew, yes? It's a combination of the, f of the first letter, Aleph. That's the, that's the Aleph, and the Ayn for Hebrew, Universita Ivrit. There is a very interesting text, a question that Maimonides was asked around the year 1194, or maybe five. The story goes as the following. The responsa is responsa number 43, but it's very interesting because it has got its parallel in responsa number 56. Maimonides' responsa. I mean the collection that was collected by our professor at the of the Hebrew University, Professor Joshua Blau. And here is the story. She says, the one who asks Maimonides, I was born to a family of learned people. And I was taught by my father, as Barbara Streisand, Streisand said tomorrow, yesterday, I was educated properly at home. So I learned how to read. I knew how to write. Then I was married into this, excuse me for the wording, good for nothing person. We moved to his mother's home. And after a short while, he left. I was at that time 14 years old. That one, she was married. He left me, 
There is a sentence I, that I do not cite now. In a second, I tell you this t- sentence. And he went to do business in Palestine, in Syria. He came back with, me, with this mission, empty pocket, as good for nothing as he was before. By then, we stayed for a few years. I was already 17, and we had our firstborn child. He left me again. Now to Iraq. Came back with the same nothing that he left. Came back and we had another child. I came to a conclusion that I have to take care of my family. So I became a teacher. Students started coming to me. I taught them. The parents came to parents' meetings. Then he left again. I continued teaching. He came after we had four children. And then he insisted me to stop teaching because he is insulted by the fact that I take care of the family. How can I stop my teaching, she asks Maimonides, if this good for good for nothing comes back and does not supply me with anything. So please find me a way. Hebrew law, Jewish law, does not enable officially a woman to divorce her husband. You know. Maimonides says the following, in two lines. If the case is what she said, I give you this advice, you can divorce him and get rid of him. It's a precedent. If you want, you can read it. I'm not going to give you the answer. But that's the case. How does she describe the dire situation she was in? It comes to the gesture and the symbol that we are going to give you today. She says the following. She didn't, he didn't even leave me oil for the lamp to read at night. That's the lamp. Lamps were for light, light for learning. And that's why you have the last part in the pin of the university, the torch of learning. You are going to take it with you. It is the first century discovery of the Hebrew University excavations. Light coming for a lamp representing the learning that has been going for thousands of years among us. Yes, that's what you carry with you. So forget about my morning days. Forget about your, st- your teacher. Remember the pin. Aleph and Ein and light. Thank you very much. I now invite Oren Netaniel to join President Menachem Ben Sasson by the lectern for the dedication of the inscription on the Wall of Life in the name of Alisa Olfrecht. During World War II, Alisa fell in love with Walter Olfrecht, a Jewish neighbor. Alisa and her mother Miriam helped Walter and his family and many Jews escape from the Nazis, often hiding them in their home. Elisa later converted to Judaism and married Walter, moving to Israel before the establishment of the state. She loved the land of Israel unconditionally and felt a strong connection to Judaism and Zionism. Elisa was a devoted Israeli, contributing significantly to charitable and national institutions. I now invite Zahava and Ernest Danzinger of Israel to join the President for the dedication of the inscription on the Wall of Life in the name of the Danzinger family in memory of their son, pilot, Lieutenant Daniel Danzinger, who fell in the line of duty in 1970. Daniel Danzinger was born in Tel Aviv in 1950, the eldest son of Zahava and Ernest. His family moved to Moshav and took up farming, though he later graduated from high school in electronics. Daniel had a remarkable memory and a great love of photography, documenting the world with beautiful landscape photographs. 
In 1968, Daniel, fulfilling his boyhood dream, entered the Air Force, proudly receiving his wings two years later. On June 18, 1970, his life was cut short in a training accident. I now invite Ronnie Golan, lawyer of the late Yachalomi Shachori of Israel, to join the president for the dedication of the inscription on the wall of life in the name of Yahalomi Shachori in memory of Miriam and Leah Aharoni. American-born Yahalomi Shachori was a driving force in Israel's Ministry of Agriculture, promoting with great success the global sale of industrial and agricultural products and increased cooperation with the world of academia in Israel. She rose to the position of Vice President for Economics and CEO of Agricultural Exports at the Ministry and was later appointed Agricultural Advisor to Israel's Embassy in Washington, D.C. I now invite Svi Yona of Israel to join the President for the dedication of the inscription on the Wall of Life in his name. Dr. Sh Shlomit Shulav Barkan, director of the Israel Friends, will read the dedicatory summary in Hebrew. Yachad im mishpachto agdola, ala tzviyon al Yerushalayim yirat bishnot ha-chamishim. Bereshit darkai itgorera ha-mishpacha b'marberet talpiyot. Bitsiyiruto asak tzvi b'mechirat itonim u'besandlarut. בשנת 1966 החל את עבודתו במחלקה לזואולוגיה באוניברסיטה והמשיך במכון למדעי החיים בו עבד עד לפרישתו לגמלאות. במהלך שנים אלה עסק והתמחה בטיפול וגידול בעלי חיים. הקשר ארוך השנים עם האוניברסיטה העברית והעובדה כי לא זכה לקבל השכלה הובילה את צבי להקים קרן לסיוע לצעירים מערי הפיתוח על מנת שיוכלו ללמוד and I will read the inscription in English. With his large family, Tzvi Yona came to Jerusalem from Iraq in the 1950s, having to live first in tents. In his youth, Tzvi sold newspapers and repaired shoes until in 1966, he was hired by the university's Department of Zoology, working until his retirement breeding and caring for cattle. Tzvi's long association with the Hebrew University and his own lack of an education encouraged him to establish a fund to help young people from development towns come to the university so they could also fulfill their potential and their dreams. I now invite Iba Abish to join the President for the dedication on the Wall of Life in the name of the Abish Frankel Foundation for the promotion of life sciences of Switzerland. The late Dr. Leon Abish and his wife Dr. Iba Abish, President of the Abish Frankel Foundation, were German born but gained their higher education in chemistry at the University of Basel. They enjoyed highly successful careers with Sandos, now Novartis. Since its establishment in 1994, Leon and Eva's foundation has supported many dozens of grants to life science researchers at the Hebrew University and the Weizmann Institute. I now invite Ella Feine to join the President for the dedication on the Wall of Life in the name of Martin and Ella Feine of Sweden. <laughs> the 
Both optometrist Martin Fane and culinary expert and writer Ella Fane were purveyors to the Swedish Royal Court. Martin was a founder of the Swedish Friends of the Hebrew University and the couple founded a cancer research fund at the university. Martin passed away in 1995 and Ella continues to provide significant support for the research being conducted. Martin's daughter Winnie is a generous supporter of the university's Learning Centre for the Blind in her father's memory. I now invite Louise Gabay to join the President for the dedication on the Wall of Life in the name of Jacob and Louise Gabay of Florida. <laughs> Ir Iraqi born Jacob and Louise Gabay were married for 59 years. They immigrated from Iraq to Italy and then to the United States where Jacob practiced medicine in New York. Louise and Jacob instilled in their children and grandchildren a love of learning and education, the formal education that Louise had been denied. With her husband, Louise established the Dr. and Mrs. Jacob Gabay Student Endowment Fund for disadvantaged students. I now invite Jack and Michelle Gunsborg and their daughter Emmanuel to join the President for the dedication on the Wall of Life in the name of the Humanitarian Trust, Michael Pollock Foundation of the United Kingdom. <laughs> Russian emigre Michael Pollock founded the Humanitarian Trust in 1946 with his nephew Matwey Gunsborg and with Vladimir Idelson. The Trust provides grants in Britain and Israel for education, medical care and social services. At the Hebrew University, it has established fellowships, the Michael Pollack Chair in the Theoretical Physics and scholarships for students in Russian and Slavic studies. Jacques, Jacques Gunsborg, the nephew of Matwey Gunsborg, has chaired the Humanitarian Trust since 1966. <laughs> I now invite John Milston and Karen Pisk to join the President for the dedication on the Wall of Life in the name of their parents, Marcia and Alan Milston OAM of Australia. Alan Milston, OAM, Honorary Fellow of the Hebrew University and Honorary Governor, served the Australian Friends for 65 years, including terms as National Treasurer and President of the New South Wales Friends. Alan worked ceaselessly and successfully in gaining legacies for the University. Alan and Marcia opened their homes for Friends functions and contributed to many projects, including student scholarships, the Mount Scopa Student Village, the Australian Computer Centre, and later the Australian Humanities Complex. I now invite Ron Rab OAM, the son of Mafalda Rab Medley, to join the President for the dedication of the inscription on the Wall of Life in the name of the estate of Mafalda Rab Medley and family of Australia.
Born in Singapore, Mafalda Rub Medley was the daughter of a family which had fled anti-Semitism in Iraq. Mafalda escaped to London from Singapore with her mother and sister just before the Japanese invasions of the island in 1942. Her husband Jack, a refugee from Vienna, was evacuated to Bombay and joined the Australian Army Reserves. Jack and Mafalda were reunited after the war and eventually went to live in Melbourne where they established a business and raised a family. I now invite Michael and April Rosenfeld of Canada to join the President for the dedication of the inscription on the Wall of Life in their names. Michael and April Rosenfeld were born and raised in Montreal. Michael is past president of the Akiva Day School and has sat on the boards of the Maimonides Geriatric Centre and Hertzlia High School. April is involved with the Hope and Cope Wellness Centre, a project of Montreal's Jewish, Montreal's Jewish General Hospital. The Rosenfeld's concern for medical health has led to generous support for IMRIC, the Institute for Medical Research Israel-Canada, at the Hebrew University's Faculty of Medicine. I now invite Steve Rubinell to join the President for the dedication of the inscription of the Wall of Life in the names of Steve and Marlene Rubinell of Illinois. Steve, Dr. Steve Rubinell is an internationally renowned information technology expert, recently voted one of the top 10 CIOs on Wall Street. He regularly speaks at high-tech conferences in Israel and is a consultant to local technology companies. Steve has a close relationship with the Hebrew University and the American Friends, and with his wife Marlene, has established the Rubinell Family Scholarship Endowment Fund to support graduate students in life sciences. I now invite Daniel I and Marcy D. Schlesinger of Illinois to join the President for the dedication of the inscription on the Wall of Life in their names. <laughs> Hebrew University alumnus Daniel Schlesinger, Schlesinger and Marcia Schlesinger are deeply committed to Israel and the Jewish people worldwide. Daniel, a governor of the university and a member of its executive committee, recently became president of the American Friends. Dan and Marcy have been married for 35 years and have four children and three grandchildren. They were delighted to be present when Dan's father and the late mother were honored at the Wall of Life in 2009. I now invite Robert and Renata Schmucker of Germany <laughs> to join the President for the dedication of the inscription on the Wall of Life in their names. <laughs> Professor Robert Schmucker is founder of Schmucker Technology, a consulting firm for weapon threat and assessment. 
Renata Schmucker was an electronics expert at Siemens before becoming a full-time wife, mother and charity volunteer. The Schmuckers give generously to many causes in Israel and Germany, including children's hospitals and hospices and the new Jewish Center in Munich. At the Hebrew University, they have supported the Safra Brain Sciences Center and the Scopus Awards. I now invite Tom Selman to join the President for the dedication of the inscriptions on the Wall of Life in the name of his parents, Joseph and Bernice Selman of Texas. Pioneering radiologist and cancer expert, Dr. Joseph Selman and his wife, Bernice, lived in Tyler, Texas for 60 years. They were leading members of Temple Betel and active supporters of many causes, including the East Texas Symphony Orchestra and Meals on Wheels. The Joseph and Bernice Selman Endowment for Medical Students, established by one of their sons, Thomas Selman, combines two of his parents' great passions, medicine and the State of Israel. I now invite Lillian and Bryant Schiller of Canada to join the President for the dedication on the Wall of Life in their names and their family. Lillian and Bryant Schiller have a long and close association with the Hebrew University beginning in 1945 when Lillian was delivered in Odessa by her doctor who had later become the first dean of the Faculty of Medicine. Lillian is a former president of the Montreal Friends. Bryant Schiller is a scientist and an author. Lillian and Bryant have established Hebrew University prizes for excellence and scholarships for students in life sciences, medicine and computer science. I now invite Iba Arbish, representing the Talamum family, to join the President for the dedication of the Wall of Life in the name of the late Alexander Talamum of USA, in memory of Naftali and Stanislaw Talamum. <laughs> Alexander Talamum, Professor of Pathology in Philadelphia, died in 2012. His Polish-born parents, Naftali and Stanislaw, had met during medical studies in Prague. Stanislaw died in 1937. Naftali and the young Alexander were captured by Russian forces in 1939 and relocated to Siberia, subsequently living in Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Palestine, and after the war in Britain. There, Naftali established a successful medical practice and Alexander studied medicine, married and raised a family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the dedications. I'm afraid that uh, due to the ceremony you forgot uh, the view. It's one of the finest days, the view of Jerusalem, look behind. 
And uh, I would like to introduce to you the lady who's in charge of the campaign of the university, Mrs. Barbara Mandel. She overlooks us all along to make sure that you, do, you did the right things. Thank you, Barbara. Sax Range are now going to return and they're going to play Happy Day. <laughs> Thank you, the swinging saxophones of Sax Range. Uh, sax Range are available for weddings, for mitzvahs, <laughs> circumcisions, uh, and the occasional baptism. Uh, the, the Wall of Life ceremony is now concluded, uh, but following in the tradition established by my former colleague and mentor, Eliyahu Honig, I ask all the honorees to rise to receive our collective appreciation and thanks for their friendship and generosity to the Hebrew University of Jerusalem.